Hi friends, welcome. I'm Andy Lee and this is the Bite of Bread. It's weekly nourishment for your soul. Come on in, get your hot tea and your decaf, your stretchy pants, your Bible journal, and the Bite of Bread reading plan if you have it. You can, if you don't, you can get the reading plan from wordsbyandylee.com. So every week I have a new article and a reading plan um, maybe it's about discouragement like this week. Sometimes it's about hope. Sometimes it's about joy. Hey, Pam, it's good to see you and Walt and Karen. I'm glad you could join me tonight. Deb Warren, my friend, good to see you. I hope you guys are hanging in there, um, getting some rest during the quarantine. It's not going to last forever. That was just some words God just told me to tell you. It's not going to last forever. For some of us, we're going to say, oh man, I wish it lasted a little longer. Some of us are going to be, yes. And we know for those financially who really need to go back to work that we really need this quarantine to be lifted. So tonight we're talking about discouragement. So if you are struggling with discouragement, and it may be about this quarantine um, it may be about financial things, or it may be something totally different. Maybe it's a health issue. Maybe it's a, it's a dream, a dream that has not been fulfilled. It's a longing for a certain job. It's a longing for a spouse. It's a longing for a baby. Whatever that might be, that discouragement that you're in. Stay with me tonight because we're going to be talking about um, finding camaraderie with some of the great people of faith who were discouraged finding scriptures um, that can encourage us and tell us what we can do to get out of that discouraged place. So stay with me tonight as we talk about being discouraged. Hey, Kathy, good to see you. Hold my hands, my friends. We're going to pray us up while we're waiting for people to come on with us and to get our hearts ready for what God's got tonight. So hold my hands. Father, we praise you and love you, Lord. Ah, oh, I just want us to take a minute to breathe and to praise you and to worship you. You guys out there, you just tell the Lord thank you. Tell him, Lord, you are good, you are kind, you are with us. You have not forsaken us. You are a God of presence. And so, God, I pray you open our eyes to your presence, open our hearts to your presence, open our ears to your words, Lord, that we might hear them and put them into action, that peace would, would come through in those places of worry. And for those who are discouraged, I pray tonight they will be strengthened and they will take courage and keep on walking with you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name I pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Hi, Bradley. Good to see you. I am um, I am going to be in Joshua tonight. But before we get to Joshua, you might want to, if you have a Bible, you might want to get it to Joshua. But before we get to Joshua, did you know that, that some of the greatest men and women of faith have been discouraged. And does that make you feel better? Let me tell you, one of them is Billy Graham, and he has a very famous quote um, that you can find on the internet. And Billy said, the Christian life is not a constant high. I have my moments of deep discouragement. I have to go to God in prayer with tears in my eyes and say, Oh God, forgive me or help me. Y'all, Billy Graham said that. Billy Graham, the great crusader, the evangelist who had all these millions of people come to Jesus. He had his moments of discouragement. And can I just tell you, that makes me feel better about my life. Hey, Donna, good to see you. Does that make you feel better about your life, too, that someone like Billy Graham was um, discouraged at times? But I do think we have this idea that as Christians, we're always supposed to be happy and things are good and when we're in the Lord's will, everything will be wonderful, and it's just not true, and it's not biblical. <laughs> and we're going to be talking tonight about some of the great um, heroes of faith in the Bible, and that they at time were, times 
were discouraged also. But I just wanted to share with you the whole reason why this even came up is guess what? Last week, I thought, was it this week? No, last week, something happened. Something was said that pushed my discouragement button all the way to my backbone. I mean, just like I felt like somebody had punched me in the gut. I'm not going to go into the details. Just tell you that the enemy knows exactly where to push my buttons for discouragement. And that was a big one. And it was so bad, my friends, that I had this thought. If you've read my article, you know what I'm going to say. I had this thought that I've never had before. And that was, now don't think less of me. Hi, Diane Cunningham. Don't think less of me for saying this. But I had this thought, God hates me, y'all. I have never, ever, ever thought of that before. I've always known and felt like God loved me. Um... Oh, so I knew, I knew that that wasn't true. I knew that that wasn't from the Lord, that thought. I knew it was purely my own thought or the enemy's or both. And I knew it wasn't true. But my heart, my heart hurt. My heart was just heavy. And I was so discouraged. So, you know, you go on and you do your life. And so I did my life and I made supper and then we went for a walk. And can I tell you that that's a really good thing when you're discouraged. And if you are discouraged right now, not at this moment, you need to go for a walk after this is over. If you're discouraged, you need to make a habit of walking every day. Getting out. Right now the weather is wonderful. It's April. It should be pretty good everywhere in the country. So get out and walk in the sunshine and get into the, look up at the sky and look at the, at the trees and everything blooming. But you need to get out and walk. And so I did that. And I started feeling better, to be honest. I still was dealing with some of it. Hey, Delenn, I was still upset. I still felt discouraged. But I was getting better. I felt better after walking. Well, on my way back, I went to the mailbox on the way back up to the house and there was a note inside, just perfectly timed, a note of encouragement from a friend that if I would have received that a few days earlier or even probably later, it would not have been perfect. It wouldn't have spoke to me. It wouldn't have assured me, really, that God really does love me and he really is with me and I'm really doing okay. It, it would... <laughs> Isn't he amazing? God knows exactly just when you need what you need. And if you, you're just crying out to him, and I was. I was, well, to be honest, I don't even know at that point if I was crying out to him because I was so hurt and so discouraged. But he's so faithful. So I got that note, really encouraged me and, and you know, got me going again found an old blog post that I'd written three years ago. Don't you love it when the things you teach keep on coming back to you? And it encouraged me, and I thought, i got to put that back up. So if you haven't read the blog post, wordsbyindylee.com is where the blog post is that tells more of the story and also goes more into Elijah. And we're going to be talking about some of those people of the Bible who were so discouraged. You know, in Proverbs, there's a scripture that says, hope, um, well, it's Proverbs 13, 12. And I'm just going to go there because I can't read my writing. So if you want to look in your Bible, go to Proverbs, um, Proverbs 13, 12. This is such a powerful scripture. And again, the same week that I was so discouraged, I found this scripture. It was in the um, it was in my daily reading plan. Um, but Proverbs 15, 12. I'm getting there. Are you getting there? Okay. Oh, slowly but surely. Proverbs 15, 12. Almost there. Are you there? Okay. Um, that's not right. I'm sorry. 13. <laughs> Proverbs 13, 12. Okay. And you see, can I just tell you, you don't have to be perfect. I'm not perfect, my friends. This is fine, like, live video. 
because you don't have to be perfect. So Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Amen. I mean, my heart was sick the other day. I literally felt sick. Heart deferred makes the heart sick. But a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. Oh, yes. When you finally reach that long, you get that fulfillment of what you have been waiting for and wanting so long. So tonight we're going to talk about that place of being discouraged, that having that heart sickness, because that longing has not been fulfilled yet. Lori Bowers finally made it. So glad you can make it, Lori. So Proverbs talks about it. Psalms and the Psalms. David writes about being discouraged all through the Psalms. Just pick up a Psalm and read it and read another one and you'll see how he'll be crying out to God. He'll be so discouraged and yet he'll come back to worshiping and praising. So think about Abraham and his discouragement. He waited for a long time for that longing to be fulfilled of that son, Isaac, right? Think about his wife, Sarah, who waited forever to have that baby and thought she would never have a baby. She was 90, was she 90, when she had Isaac. So Sarah knew and discouragement. Abraham knew discouragement. Moses knew discouragement. Just think about what Moses had to go through. I'm just thinking about even in Egypt, time and time again, Pharaoh would say, nope, not going to let your people go. No, not going to let your people go. And the people were going, what are you doing, Moses? Anyway, Moses knew discouragement. Then he spent 40 years in the wilderness with him. So Moses knew discouragement. Um, who else knew discouragement? Elijah. One of my favorite stories in the Bible is Elijah, 1 Kings 19. We're not going to go through that tonight. You have to go to my website, wordsbyandyling.com, to read all about Elijah because I have some other scriptures I really want us to focus on tonight. But Elijah was very discouraged. He had done amazing things for God. He had he had beaten and killed all the prophets of Baal because God had come down in power and might and shown his hand. And yet Elijah was discouraged and ran because Jezebel was going to kill him. So Great, great men and women of faith were discouraged. They knew discouragement in the Bible. I just want you, I want you to know, if you are discouraged, you are not alone. And I think there's so much power in that camaraderie and knowing that we, that we are not alone in our human needs, in our humanness, our discouragement, our, our frustration, our, our hurt, our loneliness, whatever that is that you're in tonight. Um, you're not alone that others are experiencing that too. And even the greatest men and women of faith have experienced it. But um, go to Words by Andy Lee to read more about Elijah. We're going to go to a new paragraph. And I want to go to our Bite of Bread reading plan. So our Bite of Bread reading plan, um, I give you five scriptures and they're bites. They're just one verse at a time. And I even write them out for you. So you don't have to have your Bible, but I almost like to have my Bible. But you can print this off. You can download it. It's free. You can have it. There's one every week. But this week, the first um, verse was Joshua 1, 9. And then I love the story of Joshua too. So if you want to go with me to Joshua, Joshua 1, 9, and let's just set the context of this verse first. In Joshua 1, 9, it says that Moses has died and that God has placed Joshua in charge. Now, Joshua was one of Moses' right-hand guys. He was a man who, when Moses would go to the tabernacle, to the tent, a meeting and meet with God, when Moses would leave, Joshua would stay. He would stay. He'd stay right there by the tent. So Joshua was a man who... who would seek after the Lord in his presence. He wanted to be in his presence. He was a man of great faith. And so Joshua is about to take Moses' place, about to step in his shoes, which was a really big thing to do because people thought the world of Moses, and Moses had led them out of Egypt, led them through the desert, and now Joshua had to take his place. And God is encouraging Joshua in Joshua 1, and he says in verse 5, As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Somebody needs to hear that tonight because you feel alone and you feel forsaken. 
but God is a God who is present. He's a God whose character is a character whose st- his personality, he, he stays, he's consistent. He stays with us. He won't leave us or forsake us. Even if you can't feel him, I promise you, he is right there. He's with you. Some of you need to go outside so you can see the sunset and remember of the creator and that he's so faithful. Um, so let me keep on reading in Joshua. So in verse 6, God says to Joshua, be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers. Let's stop there for a minute. I think so many times we just keep on reading and we lose when we keep on reading. Um, You know, it's one thing to read the Bible. It's another thing to really dig into it. My Pastor at Life Point Church, um, Jeff Capusa always says, you can't, the Bible can't get into you until you get into the Bible. So I really believe that more than just reading, we have to start digging. We had to really look in the language and the old, the old language, you can use the keyword study Bible to help you do that. But be strong, you know how that word strong is kazak in the Hebrew. And Kazak actually means be strengthened. This is a word that's different. We looked at a word last um, last week that was also be strengthened. And it was in the Greek. Again, in the Hebrew here, God says be strengthened. Now, yeah, I've always kind of had trouble with God saying be strong. Um, I had, I had a, you know, growing up, your your parents would tell you, be strong, be tough. Well, I'm not very good about that. You know, like it's hard to muster it. So I kind of had trouble with that until I realized that God isn't saying be strong. He's saying, let me strengthen you. Be strengthened. That same word is the word that was used when it says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart over and over and over again. So that same word is used here in Joshua, where he says, be strengthened. Let me strengthen you. Be strengthened and courageous. Be of courage because you will lead the people, listen to this, to inherit the land that I promised to their forefathers. Now, listen to that. Think about it. He said, you will lead the people into the land. But which land? What land? The land that God promised. So, did you hear the word promised in there? If there's a promise in there, there's a promise in there, God will fulfill that promise. So, he's saying, be strengthened, be courageous. Because you are leading these people, but you're leading them into a place that I've already promised you to get. It's already a done deal. So don't be afraid because I've got this and I am with you. And then he said in verse 7 again, he says it over and over again. Kazakh, be strengthened and very courageous. Be careful. Listen, he tells him how not to get discouraged. Here we go. This is These are the tips we can get from Joshua of how not to be discouraged. So he says, be strong and courageous, be careful to obey him. In verse seven, all the laws, all the law my servant Moses gave you, do not turn from it to the right or the left. Y'all, when we hear law, we don't hear the same thing they heard. When they heard law, they heard of rules for living, like the way to live the best life you can live. That was the law of God for them. There were instructions for living. So he says, be careful to obey all the instructions for living my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful wherever you go. Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth. Did you hear that? He said, how, how you cannot be discouraged, how you need to be strengthened, how you need to lead these people is number one, you need to know I promised it already, it's a done deal. But number two, you need to know this, you need to study it. He says to meditate on it day and night. That word meditate, we think it's all up here. 
but that word meditate in the Hebrew, it's, it means muttering, murmuring, whispering. So it's almost like he's saying it out loud to himself over and over again. Y'all need to get some scripture and hold on to that scripture. And you need to say it out loud to yourself over and over and over again. That's how we can memorize. I know we're all thinking we're getting too old to memorize, some of us. But that's how you can memorize, saying it over and over and over again. Hey, Courtney, good to see you. Over and over again, know the word. Um, meditate on it. And, and you're going, Amy, I don't even know where to begin, where to learn. Get the bite of bread. Get the bite of bread reading plan and take some of those scriptures let them speak to you, and they're really short. Joshua 1, 9, John 16, 33. Um, we're going to read some of these, um, some more of these tonight. But that's one place you can go. You can go to my reading plans and find these scriptures that are short, that maybe one of them will just speak to your spirit, and you'll go, okay, that's mine, and I'm going to hold on to it. And I'm going to hold on to that promise. Um, and in my discouragement, I'm going to hold on to that. So... This is how God tells Joshua to, to do this. He says, be strong, be strengthened, let me strengthen you. And you need to hold on to this word and live it and know it and meditate on it. Say it over and over and over and over again. So I'm going to keep on reading. And he says, then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? This is so cool. So that word commanded, this is one of my favorite parts about this scripture. Is I always struggled with God commanding me to be strong, but I'm having trouble being strong because I'm not very strong, right? So that word commanded, that word commanded means to be appointed or to be called. And so God is saying to Joshua, have I not appointed you? Have I not called you to this? You're the one. So, so if God is saying, I have appointed you, he's saying, don't freak out and don't be discouraged because I have called you and appointed you. So I have faith in you. I believe you can do this or I wouldn't have done it. I've chosen you. So there you go. So listen to it that way. When he says, have I not chosen you? Have I not appointed you? Have I not called you? So be strengthened. Be courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord Yahweh, your God, will be with you wherever you go. You guys, you're not alone. Oh, you feel like you're alone. I know you do. I know you do. I've been there. I feel alone. You can feel alone with a hundred people around you. You're not alone. Even if you're alone in your apartment, you're not alone. The Lord is with you. Uh, one of my most popular blog posts that keeps on coming up is six, six scriptures about when you feel alone. So I know a lot of people are feeling alone out there. You can look up that article too on my website, um, wordsbyindeedly.com. Um, just type in the search um, bar... I feel alone. There's six scriptures about being alone. And it's about God's presence and God's presence with us. Time and time again, um, God promised Joshua that he would be with him. I believe that's his character. I believe that's his nature. And we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit. We live on the other side of the cross where the Holy Spirit has been given. So he is with us. He is with us. You know, I, I found a, a quote um, the other day, and I don't know who said it, so I think it's anonymous, but in case anybody knows, let me know if, if you know who said this. Hey, Lisa, good to see you in bed. Um, stop trying to find happiness where you lost it. Mm, that's a good one. Let's do that again. Stop trying to find happiness where you lost it. If you were discouraged and you are really sad because you've lost happiness someplace, but you, do you ever just find yourself, you keep on trying to go back and doing it the way you did it before? You're trying to go back and relive it, or you're trying to go back. If it's not working, you need to stop. <laughs> stop. I just realized that lately in something that I've been 
trying to do, longing to do, trying to fulfill, and I've just been hit, hitting my head up against the wall. And God said, stop trying to do it like you've been doing it. You know, have, do you ask God, what do you want me to do? Do you stop and ask him, what should be my next step? Um, it was interesting. I put that question on um, the journal for all my kids. We're, we have school online now. <laughs> so all of them have to answer a journal question for me to say, hey, they're there here today. And I asked them, do you, do you pray and ask God how to do things or what to do? And most of them said, only when I'm in trouble or only when I can't, I'm, I'm really worried or scared or can't figure it out or things are really bad. But we don't have to wait till things are really bad to ask God how to do something or which way to go or what way to do. When we are discouraged, the first place we should go is to our knees. <laughs> Billy Graham said, he said, I repent, I ask God to forgive me, or I ask him to help me. I think we should do all of it. Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for being discouraged because this place of lack of trust or this place of put more focus on me. So forgive me, Lord, of that and help me, Lord. Show me. You know, he's a lot smarter than we are. He's so much smarter than we are. He can think outside that box so much faster and smarter than we can. So, Lord, you show me. Help me do it differently than the way I've been trying to do it. Help me, Lord. I love Psalm 51, 12. It says, uh, oh, let's just read the whole thing. Psalm 51, 12. I do have that one. I do have that one marked or I did. I did, but I think it fell out. So turn with me to Psalm 51, 12. Um, and then we have one more scripture tonight that we're going to look at. But Psalm 51, 12 says, Create in me a pure heart. Oh, this is a great scripture to pray. Write it down if you need a great scripture to pray. I like praying it on my knees. Create in me, Lord, a pure heart and renew a steadfast spirit. That word steadfast means faithful, fixed, sure, and prepared. I'm going to say that again. Renew in me, or, yeah, renew a faithful, fixed, sure, prepared spirit in me. Renew it, Lord. I need some uh, to be fresh and renewed. So create in me a pure heart, O oh God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. Do not cast me from your presence or take the Holy Spirit from me. Look at this. I need your presence, right? This was this was David. David had had um, written this. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. When you are discouraged, that joy is gone. Amen. So if you're in that discouraged place, I would encourage you to make this a prayer this week for you. Pray um, Psalm 51, 10 to 12. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. That word willing also means generous. I love that. Grant me a generous spirit, y'all. When you start giving out, you start helping other people, you get your mind focused off of you and on other people and helping them, that generous spirit, you're going to get some of that joy back and some of that discouragement is going to go away because you're going to be encouraged as you encourage other people with your generous spirit of giving, which, by the way, I don't know if she's still watching, but my friend Delinda Neighbor, we grew up together in a little bitty town in Oklahoma, and Delinda, I just saw, is a seamstress, and she had made I don't know how many uh, face masks, and had sent them to another friend in Oklahoma to her uh, medical team there, so. This is what we're talking about. This is what we're talking about. If you are discouraged, yes, we can pray. Yes, we need to be in the Word. But we also be, need to get out there and bless the bless other people with a generous hearts and generous spirits. The final scripture I'm going to give you all tonight is from the Bible Bread. And it's Psalm 27, 14. It says, Wait for the Lord. Wait for Yahweh. Be strong. There we go again. Be strengthened. Remember, now from now on, can you just read that as be strengthened? <laughs> so to be strong. Be strengthened and let your heart take courage. So let your heart take courage. 
take it. Take that courage God has for you. Let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for the Lord. Well, that Lord, that word wait means to expect and to hope. And that totally makes a different wait for me. You're just waiting, you're just waiting, you're just waiting. But no, this is a this is a waiting with hope. This is a waiting with expectancy. That is a hope. So hope on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. As we as we have to continue to kind of slow down stuff, don't worry, this is gonna change soon and life will get back to normal. But enjoy the moment. Enjoy the moment of things being slower and enjoy the moment to have more time to be in the Word. Enjoy the moment to be in prayer, to get outside, to have time to walk around and walk in the mornings or walk in the evenings um, and hope in the Lord. I'm going to read my prompt. Take courage. Discouragement eats away at our courage. It does, and it? it just makes us fun. God, quit. And sometimes we need to quit. Let God show us what to do. But wait on God. If things aren't turning out the way you dreamed or hoped, wait on Him. That involves trusting Him, His timing, His plans for the outcome. As you wait, worship. Turn on your favorite worship song or Christian radio station or stream your favorite music and dance in your kitchen tonight or tomorrow or in the next day. Dance in your kitchen. Also begin each day during this season of discouragement on your knees in prayer. I find it's a great way to start your day. It's a place of saying, Lord, I love you. It's a place of humbly being before him. But after you pray and you get up, turn on that music and worship and get down. We can worship while we wait. That worship will lift your spirits. That worship will lift the discouragement. Hold my hands. Let me pray us up. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for this scripture. This scripture is so alive and powerful, God. Thank you, Lord, for the words that you gave Joshua, the, the character you are, Lord, of a uh, God who's always with us and won't leave us. Lord, thank you that you strengthen us. I pray for all who are watching in the name of Jesus. I pray for a strengthening of their heart right now. I pray against that discouragement. I pray you give them new ideas, open up new ways of thinking, Lord, new ways of of doing whatever they've been doing, Lord, not to go back to the old way, but something new, to wait on you, to hope in you, to study your word. Give them scripture, Lord, to stand on, to speak, to say out loud. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you are so tangible and real and present with us. It's in your holy name I pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Go out there and be a threat to the enemy as you trust the Lord and wait on him, even when you're discouraged that you, that you know that he's got something good planned. I love y'all. You have a great week, and I'll see you next Wednesday right here on The Bite of Bread. Visit wordsbyindylee.com. Go to my YouTube channel, Indy Lee Bible, and watch some other episodes. Oh, and by the way, on my website, I tried something new this week, and I recorded my article. So if you know people who don't like to read or they have trouble reading because of their eyes or, or some kind of handicap, let them know that they they can listen to it now. You could listen to it and put your makeup on at the same time. Have a great night. Love you. Bye.